Hey guys, I'm doing yet another informal uh, phone in hand video because it's almost time for me to take this makeup off and sit down and watch Victoria on PBS. It's almost nine o'clock. I've got one more dish to wash. I'm gonna run the vacuum, take the trash out, record this video and sit down and watch Victoria with my meal, my stir fry and sweet potatoes that I just made. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> we are going to be doing two patterns. Um, this is for my uh, talk in a couple of weeks. I know that I don't have to make an outfit for a talk. I'm only going to be on the platform for a couple of minutes, but I take any occasion as a special occasion to make a new outfit. So I'm going to be doing two patterns um, for this outfit. The... Um, the the inspiration for the outfit is kind of like a pioneer western woman like wild wild west but i'm not gonna be wild i'm gonna be a a, a lady okay <laughs> so i'm gonna be using the mccall's 7575 uh pattern for the oxford shirt um i am going to be doing a combination of both views c and d I'm going to be doing that uh, dolphin hem on um, view D, but I'm going to be doing the long sleeve of view C. There was going to be no pockets on here. Um, I'm also going to do a hidden button placket because I don't like seeing buttons on Oxford shirts. I really, really don't. So yeah, um, I'm going to be using a white peach skin that I bought yesterday at Joanne Fabrics. It was like $9 a yard on sale and then an additional percentage off. So it was probably more like $7.50 a yard. So I got two yards of that. It is very soft and drapey. I initially I wanted to do a traditional cotton, but then I thought about ironing and I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. So I've got this very drapey white peach skin. Uh, for my skirt, I'm going to be doing this out of print Berta 7283 pattern. I am hoping that I can resize this because I cut it way too small. Um, and I don't know if the local Joann still has it because if your Joann's is like my Joann's, you know that they only carry one Berta pattern of every number. So because this is old... And I could not find them um, on eBay or Etsy. I think I only found one. No, I didn't find. I didn't find them on eBay or Etsy because I was. I definitely would have bought it. Um, I'm gonna try and resize this. This is from. They don't list the. The age on here. Oh, 2011. It's from 2011. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing that in the view B. Uh, skirt which is just a longer skirt it kind of has a pleat in the center front I'm not going to be doing those pockets I'm not doing the pockets on the skirt and I probably won't be doing the the darts either but we'll get to that in a minute anyway the fabric that I'm going to do the skirt in is a dark camel and white houndstooth uh, this was in the Famous Maker section at Joann's. I've had it for maybe about a year now. And this is quite a bit of fabric. I think I initially was going to make a coat out of this. But then they came out with so many awesome plaids. So I, I ditched that idea. So I'm going to make the skirt. And I'm thinking maybe, maybe, maybe possibly making a cape to just go over my shoulder. Or a shawl. Not a cape. A shawl to go over my shoulders out of that same stuff. I already know what boots I'm gonna wear. My moccasin boots. I haven't worn them in like two years. <laughs> so that is the plan, you guys. Western pioneer woman. Anyway, I will show you guys the finished product in three, two, one.
Hey guys, good to see you again. How did you like my Western woman outfit? I enjoyed it. It came out exactly how I liked it, or exactly how I wanted it to. Um, there are a little snap, couple snafus that I had with it, but this is my first time doing um, a standing collar on with a placket. No, it's not my first time. I've done a an Oxford shirt before, but this is the first time I was actually serious about it. <laughs> um, so this pattern, um, I thought that I needed in a size 14 because the finished garment measurements were really big for a size 16, but the pattern that I bought started at a size 16 and I think went up to like a size 22, 24, somewhere in there. So I just decided that I was going to take in the um, darks a little bit more so that I would have some more contouring around the waist area and more for the bust. Um, where my bust darts stop are too high. I think I have that problem quite often. And I'm sure that there's an adjustment for that. I've just never paid attention to it. This particular pattern by Palmer Pletch actually gives you multiple adjustments that you can do on a shirt, but I really wasn't about that. Um, so I didn't follow any of those. And I think really that these darts that are coming from the side of the bodice of the top need to be lowered. Yeah, they need to be lowered. Like I adjusted the, the length of the shirt because I'm under 5'3", so I adjusted it for petite. But them side darts, they're not helping me at all. Um, the other thing, that I wanted to make sure of when I made this white shirt, because I love white Oxfords, um, is that I didn't have this going on right here. So it's not as bad as I have had it before on department store shirts. Um, and I think that maybe I should not have taken in the dark as much in the bust area, or actually uh, where the dark stops is right where the problem is. So I think if I had shortened the dark down here, and just left it for the waist area, it probably would have been better and given me more room in the bust. Now, that is something that I can actually go in there and adjust now, but I'm not gonna do it. Uh, and the reason why is, is because I actually went ahead and made a camisole to go underneath of this out of the same material. And let me show that to you. So what we've got here is the Simplicity 8545 pattern. It just recently came out for the spring line. And I just made this very basic camisole here out of the same white peach skin that the shirt is made out of. So that I wouldn't have any issues with it matching and when I want to wear this shirt in the future, I don't have to go, hmm, where are all my white camisoles? Now typically I would prefer to wear a, um, dark color camisole underneath of a white shirt so that you don't see it at all underneath but i kind of like this um this look underneath of the um the matching camisole but yeah super easy to make um all it is is this here dress shortened um i made that before i actually made any of the other pieces um this pattern is not easy the top pattern for the for the for the button up blouse it is not an easy pattern i would not suggest that if you want to wear this <laughs> soon that you get started on it maybe a couple days in advance uh the lady says that it's a three hour shirt and then she says well maybe not the first time maybe the second time this shirt took me far more than three hours um of course i installed my buttons inside of my placket which was great uh, unfortunately, where I placed my buttons and my buttonholes were too far over because you should not see both plackets. You should only see one. They should be lined up like this. So that is an adjustment that I will make in the future again, but that has to do with the darts too. Um, this collar is not choking me. That is so awesome because I got a fat neck. I do. Y'all think I'm little, but I'm not. I have a fat neck. <laughs> Um, the shoulders are actually too small for me. That actually might have to do with the setting in of the sleeves. I had a really, really tough time setting these sleeves in on this, on this blouse. On the one sleeve, it was pretty easy and I only had a couple of puckers, but because 
I used a long machine stitch. I was able to kind of like move the puckers along without having to like actually rip the seam out. The second sleeve, which I'm gonna assume is this horrible looking one right here. This one right here gave me the blues, okay? Today, I came home to try and finish the shirt between 12 and two when I didn't have any clients. And this sleeve, I had to redo really this sleeve like four times because I could not get it to set right. I had all kinds of puckers and just nonsense going on until finally I was like, am I going to have to cut a new sleeve? No, because in order to, to get this sleeve, there's a lot of work on this sleeve, a lot of work. This is not a three hour shirt. I don't know what that lady was talking about, but it's not a three hour shirt. I'm not saying it's a bad pattern. I'm just saying it's not a three hour pattern. So don't advertise it as such. Maybe you can do the three hours because it's your pattern, but woo, okay? <laughs> um, the other major alteration that I made on the top is, um, remember I said I've been doing the one with the dolphin hem? It's not a dolphin hem. Dolphin hem is completely something different. They're kind of similar, but not really. So this is called a curved hem on this um on this shirt oh this is not a dolphin hem it's the curved hem um a lot of shirts stop like this but some scoop up at the hip like so for this pattern patty palmer i think that's her first name we're gonna call her patty anyway miss palmer tells you to make a, a base of one fourth inch from the raw edge then you need to turn that up and press it. And then you make an additional five eighths um, turn up the hem and then you, you stitch it. That junk was impossible. I don't know how that was supposed to go, but not for this curved hem. It doesn't work. So I scoured the internet and I found a Craftsy blog where somebody actually took bias tape and did the hem and it was one million percent better so if you're going to do this pattern if you don't listen to anything else that i say trust and believe that you're going to want to finish your hem especially on the curved hem with bias tape if you don't make your own you need to go buy some and do your hem that way it turns out so much better than just turning your own hem up and making a self-facing. You don't wanna do that. You wanna go buy you some bias tape. Do it, okay? You're gonna wish you had, if you somehow succeed at just making the self-facing for the hem, keep it to yourself, <laughs> okay? I don't wanna hear it. Yeah. Um, this shirt has a lot of components to it. And I did the shirt with the least amount of stuff on it like I don't have pockets I don't have the little um roll up cuffs with the little tabs yeah and this shirt still took a lot of energy out of me like I have known that I had my talk today for at least two months and February the 1st snuck up on me I think it snuck up on all of us I can't believe it. But the past two days, I was just tired. I didn't feel like sewing. And this shirt, it literally did take the wind out of me. But I like the way that it, it turned out. Even though you can see both my plackets. Um, <laughs> I still like the way that it turned out. I'm still going to wear this bad boy again. I'm going to wear it all the way through the springtime because I like it. I am going to make this pattern again. Even though it was tough, I'm still going to make it again. I would not suggest the beginner try this. You might want to try one with less pieces that actually says easy on it. I, the one that I've done before was a burner pattern and it was easier than this. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Okay? And there was a lot of handwork involved in this shirt. A lot of slip stitching. A lot of slip stitching. But it turns out it's so nice. It is so nice, you guys. Now, as for the skirt, um... I did this skirt. Um, I started on it at 4.30 today. Um, that was cutting it out. And I finished it at 6.25. My meeting starts at 7. <laughs> so guess who was late? 
me. I was only five minutes late. No, late is still late. Okay. Anyway, this pattern is super easy. Let me see what the skill level is on it. Please hold. The skill level is easy. It's a level two. Now level one, level two. I feel it could be a level one, but I have not done that view right there. Um, I love this skirt. I'm definitely going to make more of this skirt. I am going to drop the waist on it though. Uh, cause it, it is kind of weird on me a little bit. It's not the most flattering fit for me. So I am going to drop the waist on it the next time that I make it, but it's easy. Like if I made it from start to finish cutting it out in under two hours, I'm definitely going to make it again. Um, the only major alteration that I did on this is I did not add these here flaps. She has flaps where there are no pockets. I didn't add that. It didn't, it didn't seem to make sense to me. Yeah. But like I said, I've been wanting to do this pattern for many, many years. This pattern is old and I like it a lot. The great thing about it is um, the skirt on the model stops here where it's open. This whole part right here is just a slit. I s kept mine down to the knee at least. Yeah, mine actually, my slit starts at the knee and then I can, it kicks open when I walk, which you know I like that. I like movement in my skirts and my dresses. So yeah, this pattern is definitely a must have. Um, I wouldn't suggest it for people like me who have no hips or if you have a thick waist, I wouldn't suggest it. Unless, of course, you don't care that you have a thick waist or no hips. Then you go ahead and get that girl. You do that, okay? I did it. You can do it too. But for ladies who have wider hips or small waists, this is going to look amazing on you. You are going to love it. Unfortunately, it is out of print. Sorry, it's out of print, guys. Um, but you may be able to find it on the, the, the internet. I never saw it on the internet when I looked for it in the right size. But I didn't even... Okay. So I cut this in a size 10, okay? Berta size 10 is really small. It's really small. Um, so what I did is I eliminated the darts in the front and the back and I came up with exactly my size for the bucket. I did have to um, make the waistband facings on the inside um, from scratch and I just basically used three inches from the top of the waistband on the actual skirt pattern piece to do it. Super easy. So from now on if I find any more skirts that I've cut in the wrong size, but who I want to keep and they have darts in them, I just want to do the darts. How simple is that? Super easy. Uh, but one thing I have found out um, with this pattern is I think contoured waistbands are for me. This does not have a contoured waistband, but I think contoured waistbands probably look better on my, my shape. Yeah, pretty sure. Because uh, the contoured skirts that I have in my closet, whether I made them or I bought them from a department store, they look way better than ones that have uh, tight waistbands or no waistbands. I'm kind of rambling today. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sleepy. I do this when I'm sleepy. Why do I do this to y'all when I'm sleepy? You didn't have to watch it this far, though. You didn't have to. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I do suggest that you get all three of these patterns because you may need one as a staple. Where did I put it that fast? You will need this one as a staple for some of your undergarments and foundations. Um, this is going to make an awesome slip for all of your dresses. Um, and this will make an awesome camisole for your sheer tops. Everybody needs to have a good button down pattern because they just look good and especially if you don't always like uh the standard traditional collar but you like these uh the standard kind of like standing Nehru collar if you like that this is for you if you like the uh curved hem this is for you because it's really cute it's really cute guys 
And um, if you want a flowy winter skirt, this is for you. This is for you guys. I am going to um, put some bias tape on my edges of the opening of the skirt here where the slit is to make sure my edges don't ever fray. I don't want them to leave me ever. <laughs> you should too. I'm going to do that more often. I'm going to put more bias tape on my raw edges. If I don't get my serger out and start uh, serging my edges. What's that called? Anyway, that's enough of me. <laughs> I'm sorry this one was long, guys. I need to eat and get in the bed. Just keeping it real. Okay, well, thank you for watching this long rambling of my pattern reviews for the Berta 73, 70, the Berta 7283, the McCall's 7575, and the Simplicity 8585 pattern. Yep, y'all know I am not partial to any company. I like them all. All right, guys. See ya.